Hello and welcome back to Genuine Nonsense. I'm Kelly McFarland. Thank you for joining me tonight. If you're watching this on the replay, please post in the comments that you're watching this on the replay. That's all you have to say. Just I'm watching this on the replay or I watched it on the replay or what is this? You can say anything you want. Uh, either way, welcome. We are in December. It's here. We're doing it. And I can't believe it. I uh, am, am ready for the year to flip, although I'm fully aware that this year is going to probably feel the same for a while. Uh, we're doing our best. Wouldn't you agree? I think so. A uh, couple things I wanted to talk about uh, before I get started with my guest. I have such a great guest to open the show tonight. Uh, Leanne Lord is here with us. And before I get to that, um, I wanted to talk about the monolith. Um, there are now four monoliths that have appeared throughout the world now. Uh, they are disappearing and reappearing. And I know I talked about this last week, so don't get all mad. Don't be like, find something new to talk about. Uh, I can't. I can't find something new to talk about because this is taking up a lot of real estate in my brain. Um, I, I want to know answers and I want to know why. And I also want to see one. Like, I want to see it in real life. So uh, if you haven't heard about these monoliths, please, please uh, Google it and look it up and be aware, okay? Because it's either the coolest thing ever or it's terrifying. Either way, I need more information. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, I will say that I have been doing an advent calendar. This is the first time I've ever done one. My friend, Carolyn Plummer, the very funny, very talented friend of mine, Carolyn Plummer, gave me the Friends advent calendar. Now, they're really milking this anniversary for the Friends, don't you think? And I like Friends a lot. I think it's funny. It's sometimes I have laughed out loud watching it. Uh, they are milking this anniversary. I've never seen so many Friends themed things in my entire life. And I haven't opened the one for today, so I thought I would do that with you all right now. So today is December 7th. Let me find the seven. I found it really quickly. The other day, it took me uh, a good five minutes to find the three, and I was a little embarrassed. Um, this is, let's see, Phoebe's Christmas Destiny Salad. These are recipes. Amazing. And I didn't look at this before, so forgive me. And I have to back up because I'm, you know, a lady of a certain age. Uh, Phoebe's Christmas Destiny Salad. And this is a quote from Phoebe, Phoebe Buffet, if you don't know the show. Okay, but that's why you have to buy it so it can fulfill its Christmas destiny. And this is season three, episode 10, the one where Rachel quits. I don't know what that is. Um, this is like bread and Worcestershire sauce and cheese. Very strange. And then this one is called Little Drops of Heaven Holiday Candy. I do know this episode. This is the episode where Monica, I won't even look, Monica makes candy for the neighbors and they turn into like the biggest assholes you've ever seen. And they come to the door in the middle of the night and they're asking for candy. And everybody's like, Monica, the way you could solve this is stop making candy. And she's like, but I want everyone to like me, which is the flaw of the character, Monica Geller. Um, it's candy time. My roommate says that they taste like little drops of heaven. And that's a character called Gary. And this is from season seven, episode nine, the one with all the candy. And then they give the recipe, which sounds disgusting. It's four dozen caramels. Do you say caramels or caramels? I don't say that word enough to tell you how I say it. Caramels, caramels. Producer Matt, do you say caramels or caramels? Um, I definitely, I think caramel, caramel is a flavor and caramel is a candy. Matt. Is I, that right? I learned something new from, no, I don't well, know. See, I just made that up. Oh. But I, I think, think right, that's though. what it is. Because this recipe card says, Caramels, C A R A M E L S. Yeah, that's caramels. Caramels, four dozen caramels, half a cup, one stick of butter, cut into pieces, plus more for the pan. 
Ooh. a half a cup of sugar, a cup and a quarter cups, a cup and a quarter cup goat milk. And, like and three monoliths. Right. Oh, I'm obsessed with the monoliths. You know this. <laughs> I can't stop. They another one popped up. Did you hear me say that? I, of course you did. Because you're producer I'm here Matt. All the time. You hear everything. Yeah, I'm feeling anxious about it. I want them to explain themselves. Well, here's the thing, Kelly. If a monolith does not appear in your front yard, then you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> okay, but you just now made one happen. Is that how monoliths <laughs> work? You say monolith three times and then it's like Beetlejuice and just shows up. Well, we've said it about seven times so far. So we're you're going to have at least I've two. I've reversed it. Yeah, I've made it, reversed it, made it, reversed yeah. it. I don't know. I ugh, It gives it keeps me up at night. I'm sorry. The, I mean. This show is causing you strife. And <laughs> oh, I yeah. This, this is the show. This is what's causing. No, <laughs> this is not what's causing me strife. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Caramel is a caramel is a flavor. Caramel is the candy. You know what? I'll do some research while you're interviewing uh, your your guest, and okay. I'll get back. I'll get back to you later in the show. There's got to be someone watching that. Yeah. I mean, I hope. What, what are you watching. drinking right now? This is a drink I call. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's where I go in the kitchen and I mix a little drink, and then I say, "Don't worry about it." Don't worry about it. After ten o'clock. I don't worry about. It. And then he just leaves me. That's Matt Fear, the very talented, very, very talented Matt Fear, producer and founding producer, founder of 2MB, which is Too Much Bread, uh, which is this network that you're watching on. They have shows every day. They have so many shows. There's a full television network lineup on the Twitch channel, as well as the 2MB network. So please look them up and give them a follow or subscribe. Uh, all right, let's bring the guest in. I'm super excited. All right, full disclosure, get ready. <sighs> Leanne was supposed to be on, I think it's like three weeks or a month ago now. And we just had lines of communication got crossed. I respect the hell out of this comedian. Uh, I, it, it seems loose to call her just a comedian. Podcaster, author, podcaster, author, comedian, uh, just all around entertainer and an amazing person. And we're going to talk about all the things. Let's bring in the guest, Leanne Lord. Hi, hey, Kelly. Hi. Thanks so for that lovely you. introduction. Well, I'm very happy to see you. And I, I, you, I mean, you look great. Do you feel great? Is that a trick question? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm as okay as I can be. You know, you you gave me the wonderful excuse tonight to take a shower and put on yeah. some lipstick and, you know, tell my cat I have things to do. I'll see you later. <laughs> um, one of the things that I love about Leanne, when we work together, which we met through Ladies of Laughter, which is an organization that... Uh, has a contest every other year. It's been around forever. They raise money for wonderful things. Go to ladiesoflaughter.org for more information on that organization. We're both winners. We're both pro category winners. And we knew each other, but like now we've toured with each other. We've gone and done shows. You always have the tightest shoe game <laughs> I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, are you serious? I'm dead serious. Like wow. the times we've been on the road, I it's all I can do to get out of my sneakers and put on a block heel. And you're like, oh, let me just put on these strappy numbers. Like, <laughs> we just drove 10 hours and you're you're putting on the best. So your shoe game is tight. And well, it's it, it's definitely I consider them show shoes. Like yes. you're not going to catch me outside in these shoes. Right. You know, and I, and I'm, I'm a little out of practice because, you know, we haven't been you know performing yeah. like we used to. And I, my feet have rebelled yeah. completely. <laughs> I had a show at a drive-in like three months ago when the weather was still cooperating. Right. And I wore heels and no lie, my back hurt for three days. I was like, wow. why? What's I, this is, do I need to plank? Like what's, there's something's giving, 
you know? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I, I had a similar situation. I had a, uh, had a show and you know, I, I always bring my shoes and these were yes. cute boots that I've, I've always worn, not always, but I love wearing them on stage when the weather starts to turn and I put them on and five minutes later, my feet said, no, ma'am. <laughs> Pass. We are not doing this, and I, I, I literally, I literally had to change back into the shoe I drove to the gig, and at least those were still decent. But it was yeah. like I, my feet really are out of practice. I yeah. think it's kind of like when I don't know how you were trained to wear heels, but my mom <laughs> trained me. You know, oh. I got, I got the little, you know, the kitten heel, and then a little bit higher, and I had to walk in the house, you know, so I wouldn't embarrass her when I went outside. I so, love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't just allowed to jump into womanhood. I was oh. eased into it. So, you know, I yeah. think it, that might be the case here. You wear them for a little while right. while you're home. Yeah. If you want to go back, this might be the, the point where we, we don't go back. I don't think I'm going to, I don't know. I mean, I have shoes that I love. I'm looking at them longingly in case you can't tell. I'm like, I have a shoe rack that hangs right there. I love the shoes. I do. And I also don't really feel the need for them anymore. Same. Same. And, and one day people will see my feet again. Well, I don't know about all that. I just right. might switch to comfortable shoes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to do a sneaker all the time, but maybe like a flat, a kitten. Yeah. And I I've dressed know. flats, of course, but you know, yes. there's, there's, there's something to, you know, dressing up for a show. Right. It's funny. I was watching a, um, I was taking a deep dive last night, couldn't sleep. And I was taking a deep dive into like just video after video after video on my phone, which I hate doing. Do you do that? Does that ever happen to you? Um, I get, I get lost more on social media. Okay. And yeah. And before I watch the video, I'll read the comments to yeah. see if it's even worth my time. That's smart. Yeah. I got stuck in a video loop. Like I went to YouTube to look up something and then the next one popped oh. up and I was like, what's this? And, like, mm. and then, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw this video though, that was really interesting to me. And it was uh, a collaboration or a, a compilation compilation of all of these uh Hollywood actresses being interviewed on panels for movies at like the junket and them shutting down like ridiculous sexist questions. So the, and it's hilarious. I recommend anyone to look it up. Right. And Scarlett Johansson is sitting next to, um, Oh, his name escapes me. Iron Man, whatever his name is. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, I don't know why his name was, escaped. probably because I mean, well, Iron Man. His name is yeah. Iron Man. He's Iron Man. <laughs> or Alan McBeal's old boyfriend. Um, so oh, right. I went way back in the file for that one. You did. And I, I feel like I just, they were talking to her and they were like asking him about like the acting process and how do you get into character? And then they go over to her and they're like, did you have to be on a special diet to get in the suit? And she was like, I'm glad I'm getting all the pressing questions. So I share all this <laughs> because as if I just brought up your shoes, because I say your shoe game is tight. Can we just talk about your uh, your comedy game for a second? Because your comedy game is even tighter than the shoes. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, I want to talk you about- know what? I actually, I, I don't mind the shoe. I, I like to entertain on many levels. Yeah. So if you don't get the joke, maybe you'll like the outfit. Maybe you'll like the yeah. shoes you know, I love whatever that. I can do. Yeah. If you're bored, stare at my outfit or my hair. Like I'm yeah. going to look good. Right. Um, I want to talk about your podcast for a second. Okay. All right. So you have your podcast. It's people with parents podcast. Yes. Which I love this name. Where did you come up with the idea for this podcast? Um, it, it sort of found me. Uh, the, the podcast is about the role reversal between adult children and aging parents. And I suddenly found myself in that situation. My parents, my parents were getting older, um, much to my surprise. I, they were themselves for so long yeah. that I kind of wasn't expecting them to start asking me questions. And then they started having medical issues. And then I'm taking them to appointments. And then I'm talking to the doctors. Mm -hmm. And I'm you know, doing the grocery shopping. And I'm like, how did this happen to me? And it, it was all, you know, for me, gradual. For some people, there's an, uh, an intervening medical event that's right. you know, big. But yeah, no, I got roped in slowly. Like it was mafia. And it was, 
it was still difficult. It was difficult enough that I started talking about it on stage because you know mm -hmm. that's how we process yeah. things. And people were laughing. And I, I thought it would just be, you know, you know, people my age. I'd never it never occurred to me that there were people that uh, their parents had them late in life or they yeah. were raising or, or they had been raised by grandparents. You know, this is a multi-generational thing. And I started the podcast out of frustration because I thought I was all alone. Mm. I thought this was only happening to me, you know, you know, selfish narcissism. <laughs> and I started, the, I started the podcast in a way of sort of just being able to tell my story and, and reaching out. And I found out there's a whole community of people yeah. who are in the situation of caring for elderly parents. And if they're not there yet, they will be. Right. And, you know, I, I try to keep the podcast balanced. It's, it's, it's micro stories. You know, you could binge my podcast in an hour. <laughs> and I mean all the episodes. <laughs> you know, there are these tiny little micro stories, you know, about things that would happen, you know, yeah. between, you know, me and my dad or me and my mom, you know, about my, my one of my most popular episodes is the thermostat wars. Uh, here at what I call the urban shady pines, <laughs> where my dad was turning the heat on in July. Oh yeah, because right. <laughs> yeah. he's always cold. Like, so what's the what temperature do you keep the house when you house when you have a multi generational house? That's right. a real question. Yeah, you know, and the battle was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so and so I you know I tell funny stories about that. So there's there's funny, there's poignant. I I had someone say that when my podcast pops up in their feed, they go. <gasps> because oh. yeah. <laughs> there might be tears that's know, so. a great way to describe it though right because I yeah. do think it's something that's if you have a relationship with the people that you identify as your parents right whoever that is if it's a grandparent or whoever is the uh the figure right in your life right. and that could be a mom or a dad or an aunt or an uncle or whoever. Yes. I do or neighbor, right? That's that's what stuck out to me about this was that it's not just it's not just for people our age. It's for folks no. that I watched my mother, I watched it flip for my mother. Our grand my grandmother came to live with us. Mm -hmm. And I remember it being like such a like bizarre flip the script. And now at my age, I'm also experiencing this with my mom and dad. And it's right really really interesting and i'm so glad that you're doing this podcast yeah, i think it's important i i, I it's a love uh, relationship yeah. you know because it's it's so very personal and you know a lot of the stories are about riding that line between preserving uh their dignity mm. and their humanity and going, no, old man, you're not doing that today. Yeah. <laughs> you're not eating right. all the candy. Right. You know, like, when did I become the grown up? <laughs> and then resenting being in that position. And how do you handle right. being in that position? Because that's tough. I just I just want to, you know, live my life and whatever. And I'm right. like, how dare you get old on me? How dare you? Right. <laughs> like, you're supposed to take care of me. Exactly. From a distance, exactly. Right? Like, that's the thing is I think there's this, like, struggle. And then you meet and you become friends. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I remember I remember becoming friends with them and thinking like these guys are pretty they're pretty cool, actually. And then they were in my business and I was like, listen, just because we're <laughs> friends can't be in my business. And then now, you know, they're in their 70s and <sighs> I couldn't get them on the phone this summer. And I was trying both their cell phones. and I was like, where? What? Why? And finally, they called me back and my dad said, oh, we went out on the jet ski and I didn't, we didn't bring a phone. So they went around the lake on the jet ski together, 74 okay. and 75. Okay. And they're I, grounded. They I are grounded. Yes. I was like, you can't go out bombing around the lake without a phone. You can't do that. And they were like, we can do whatever we want. And I was like, Oh no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I feel I, I didn't have kids, but I feel I got this crash course in a certain type of parenting. You know, if I were going to put it on my resume, I'd call it senior management. <laughs> you know, it's, yep. it's, yeah, it's very different. It, and they, it's like sometimes they're toddlers with the craftiness of teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, then they, is the dementia real or are you just snowing me right now? Like, what's going on? Right. I'm like, you really can't hear me. You really can't hear me. 
listen, my dad pretended not to hear my mom for so long <laughs> that mm -hmm. I think the hearing loss just became a thing. I mean, it's yeah, it was like a self-fulfilling efficacy, right? Yes, like, really. I really can't hear now. I really can't. <laughs> Well, I love it. And that podcast, again, is called People with Parents Podcast. And they can find it anywhere that they get their, your, your podcast. Get podcast iTunes, it. yes, on your podcast app. So easy to get podcasts now. I love it. Um, I know you, I just feel like you have so much going on. You have two books that you've written. Those yes. are on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And you can just look, just put in Leanne Lord and your books yep. will pop up. And I always ask this question when I have friends who are authors. Do you have an audible for your books? I do not. You have an amazing voice. You know what? Thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my, huh, I'm in quarantine. Maybe I'll do yeah. my audio book. You know, but in do I'm such a do-it-yourself person. Yes. And I realized this is one of those projects that I may not be just able to do, you know, sure. in my closet recording studio. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it, yeah. I, I want to do it. And I, I've been asked. Okay, but, good. I love but it. I definitely That's would need a producer. Yeah. Something to look forward to, though, I feel like, from you. Like, Thank you. you're always doing stuff. Always, always. And I know you've been a full-time working comedian for years and years and years now. And yeah. I... <laughs> Years and years and I don't know why I did three years and years. No, that's and years. okay. I listen. Okay. I'm proud You've of my years, it, and right? years and years. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. Like some people are like, "Don't say how long I've been doing it." And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, <laughs> well, it, you know, it, unfortunately, comedy is also part of the entertainment industry, and you know, yes. we're all supposed to be fetuses, you right? Know, fresh out of the womb, ready to oh, work. <laughs> I barely know anything. No, I know everything, and it's not good. No. Um, I love it. You have um. You have a show on Wednesday. We're on that show together. That's yes. online. What are you, how are you feeling about the online shows? Because I actually feel like I've adapted. And we did a show together way back at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I was like novice, rookie, didn't know what I was doing, had no lights. And with the technology, you had a oh, red okay. curtain up. <laughs> you, had, you had a mic. You were like... Yeah, whatever. I was like, where are you? Oh, I'm just, you know, this is just my, this is my rig. This is how I do it. Like yeah. you seem to like adapt like that. Is that part of your personality? Do you think? Um, when it comes to stand up, Yes. Okay. My, my regular life is a shambles. I'm like, how do people adult? This is weird. I don't feel safe. <laughs> I need, I need a guardian. Um, but yeah, no stand up. I, 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 I dive in you know, because mm -hmm. this is what I know, this is what I do. Yeah. And early on when things got shut down, I'm like, what do you, what, what do you mean we can't go out? What, what, what are we doing? And so when I got asked to do my first virtual show, I said, yes, even though I had no idea what I was doing, like right. the, how, how you found me, I did not have any of that. Like I, I whipped that up in an afternoon and it was so horrible. It was in my kitchen. I couldn't get into my refrigerator because the ring was blocking it. Right, the cats right. at it like this is too close to my food bowl. I don't like this. Um, but it was in a way exciting yeah. trying to figure out how to do it now. And I do feel way more comfortable now. I'm like, you want me to yeah. leave my house? Right. To right. So stand up, what's the link? <laughs> I love I, the easy commute from my bedroom. Like, I, oh my gosh, I agree a hundred percent. I had, I have a night coming up where I've, I don't mean to brag, but I have three shows, and I was like, normally tripling like that, I would be, you know, having to like figure it out logistically. Yep. How am I going to do it? And I'm like, I should probably change my shirt, like in between, in between, right? So right, people right. are snapping pictures. It doesn't look like I just sat in the same place in the same shirt for hours when that's right. really what we're doing. Like I'm, it's pretty easy to just do it yeah. from home. Yeah. I, I, I like it. I do feel I I've adapted, but I, I think it was a little bit easier for me because I'm, I'm really very much a pure monologist for me. It's about the jokes and the facial mm -hmm. expressions, you know, what I do fits in the square, Yes. you know, as opposed to people who might be more physical um, and it is adaptable for them, but I think it's a little harder. Yeah, you know, I'm I would trying agree. to figure out how they do what they do here if they're if they're very demonstrative. I'm really glad that my face is the most physicality that I have. Like it's yes. all, it's all in my face, and as soon as I figured that out, that I was like, I don't need to be moving. 
because I don't do that on stage. It's all right here. Yeah. Or it, or it makes the movement very specific. Yes. That's a really good you point. Know, very Aline. intentional. Yeah. Right. Yes. Love it. Yes, yes, yes. So you have we have our show on Wednesday night. That is uh, a Toys for Top fundraiser with mm -hmm. Jess Miller with OMG Comedy. And you can get tickets for that show at omgcomedyclub.com. That mm -hmm. shows at 7.30. And then you're with the um, New York Underground Comedy Festival this week, too. Yes. They, and that's uh, Saturday, right? That's Saturday. Yeah, I, I've already done, um, I did a lady show for them. I did a comedy writing panel for them, which was awesome. I could not believe so it was. Good. Oh, my gosh. Gabe Abelson was on the pat on the panel. Rick Shiner. Uh, Shiner. Shiner. Um, it was it, DC Benny. It was so good. Oh, nice. That must have been yes. so fun. And yeah. I, I wrote about it. I'm like, if I wasn't on the panel, I'd be watching because yeah. the, the information and the expertise and the user experience were just so much to soak in. Um, but Saturday, uh, it's a diversity showcase. Nice. And I am proud to say I don't know anyone on the showcase. Oh. <laughs> so they really <laughs> wanted it to open it up to new talent. Um, an emerging talent, which was the point of the Underground Comedy Festival when it was live many years ago. So they really wanted to revive it and That's give great. young comics a chance because in, in this environment, this yeah. is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. I figure that if folks that are aspiring, right, if they're aspiring comedians or they love comedy or they're comedy nerds, what a great way for people to have comedy at their fingertips now though, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can go and just search festivals and go to a writer's workshop, right? Mm -hmm. Just pay the ticket fee and sit in your house. And I think you can go to a ton of shows. And I think that this is really opening up a lot of people to seeing what we do and kind of showing them behind the curtain a little bit, which is nice. Well, I also think it's your mindset. You know, there are a lot of people who are, woe is me, there's nothing to do. You know, but I, yeah. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, you know, say it in a dismissive way. This has been a really, really tough year. It has. Uh, for people. Uh, so sometimes you need a little push. Sometimes you need a friend or, you know, just some of what you just said to, to open up what the possibilities can be. Right. Because I didn't even think about taking classes until I was in the writer's workshop, the, the Q&A, and I'm like, what, DC Benny has a class on storytelling? Right. Who better to learn storytelling from? I'm like, um, sir, right. when is your class? Because <laughs> that's something I could get better at. Gabe Abelson has a class um, about uh, late night joke writing. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could, you know, so if, listen, I know I'm not moving on to a different career. I'm not going to jump and do right. coding. So why not why not take this opportunity to get right. sharper at yes. what I do? Um, I was speaking with someone the other day uh, with a comedian, Jimmy Dunn, and he ha he's been trying to sell me on this idea for me to mm -hmm. write uh, a pilot about it. And he's he brought it up to me a couple times, and he's like, "I just think you have the you it's the thought is in your it's your voice." And he said to me, he's like, what's, the, what are you afraid of? And I was like, oh, really? Right? Because it makes you feel like you're right. What, well, I mean. Well, honestly, there's a ton to be afraid of. Right, right. <laughs> this is a very scary business. It's a very scary business. And I also am like, well, why don't, I mean, I need to jump more often, right? And I need to leap. A little more often and I feel like this has made me kind of have to rethink everything how do you feel about that I know you say I'm not going to go into coding which I love that because I'm going to start using that on people <laughs> well, I feel like I've been getting like emails and ads do, take this class in coding I'm like what are you trying to tell me internet that yeah. comedy's never coming back <laughs> learn Adobe I'm like what I don't yeah. even, I don't want to learn I don't know what that is I'm not competing with 12 year olds right right that's not what I want to do. Also, you, we're invested, right? Like I'm you, very invested. I'm invested. I'm not going anywhere. I'll pivot and figure it out. I do mean, you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, you. I was going to say, if you were going to do something else, what would it be? Besides crying in my tequila, Great, that I'm that. not doing stand up. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just, I love doing this, you know, maybe more writing. Yeah. Um, you know, there's definitely, I got a couple of my books. Yeah. For sure. Okay. It, especially about, you know, based on people with parents, yes. you know, taking those stories that I've 
done, you know, on the podcast and putting them together in book form so that it's just another thing that people can have and hold because you, you, you hit your audience in different ways. Right. You know, like I have people that, you know, they heard my podcast, had no idea it was a stand-up comic. You know, I'm saying I'm coming. It's like, oh, you have a podcast? You know, <laughs> so you think everybody knows everything about you. Right. Um, and they don't. No. You know, so, and we are lucky. We have these skills that can be um, repackaged and repurposed. Absolutely. You know, the yeah. last few years before the shutdown, um, I've, I've been hired a lot to MC conferences. Yes. Because, uh, you know, usually it's the person who's organizing it and, the, you know, it's kind of dry. But you bring in a comic who knows how to fill the right. awkward spaces, who knows that this tight little agenda you've given me is not how it's going to go. Right. <laughs> right. Or you know, if we who, do stick to this agenda, oh, this is going to be a snooze fest. Right. 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 Like, so, I, yeah, there's it, there's definitely a craft to that of like. And I and I had no idea. And this and this comes from years of them seeing comedy club shows. Right. And like. That that I had no idea I would love that so much. Yeah, you know, and that's way better paying. <laughs> it always is. Why is, why is that? Like it always is, right? It always is better paying. Uh, you work hard for it, though. I think that's the thing that oh. people don't understand is that you have to work for it. Yeah, I, I think remember, we. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I remember I, I was brought in to do um, a conference a few years ago, and I've been I've been there a conference MC for three years now. Um, they brought me in the first year and they had no idea what to expect. It was a four day conference and we got to the end of it and they were like, oh, <laughs> like, wow, oh. that's what I'm seeing. That's what the conference yeah. looks like. I'm like, I don't know who you're used to seeing, but this is who you have. Right. So they, they did not balk at my price. And, well, first of all, they paid me way more than I was expecting, but they were like, okay, we're going to give you a little bit more. Right, right. You know, because I I really put a lot of work into it. Like they hand me somebody's CV, and I'm like, yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna read where you graduated from school. I'm gonna right. be on your Twitter profile. I'm gonna be watching your videos. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an introduction right. that you haven't heard before. Then I'm gonna listen to your talk, and I'm gonna pull out the key points, and I'm gonna reference it when I go back on stage and make it funny. And I right. did that for every single speaker, and they were like. They don't realize how dialed in you have to be. Like if you're hosting, oh. you have to be present and they, it's not just like, turn it on. No, I mean, we I'm, can turn it on. We can. Yes. When it's my I'm stuff. present. I am yes. present all day, every day with them to the point that when I got there my second year, they were like, whatever you need. So they had, they would stay set up a little desk for me with oh, a perfect. light, with a monitor so I could see what was going on. I mean, it was, yes. they treated me like gold. And Good. so- and so now I even know this is what I need to make your event look amazing. That's great. You should teach that class. <laughs> I mean, I am the events and I'm always looking for better to be better at it. Right. I always want to be better than the last time I did it. Well, it even starts with, you know, no one really teaches how to MC a comedy right. show. Yeah. You know, and people were all, oh, how are we going to do virtual shows? What do we do? And I'm like, you know what? Those same skills you used at yeah. the club. It's the same skills you need here if you're emceeing and coming because the, your job is to instruct the audience. The right. instructions are a little different, but you still have to lead them. Hey, mute your mic or unmute your mic. Right. Show us your face, not your, like because people have to be told. Right. The same way they have in a club. Hey, you guys, keep your table talk to a minimum. Right. Keep your Zoom talk to a minimum. Exactly. Keep your exactly. bird out of the room. It's Keep not dog all life. that different when you yeah. really break it down to the nuts and bolts of it. Because Kelly, you've been doing this a while. You know the hustle is real. Now yeah. it's just in a square. Yes, it's, it is. it's just in sweatpants. That's all it is. That's the uh, only difference. Yeah, my ever expanding <laughs> sweatpants. Leanne, I just adore you. I'm so glad that we. Oh, I love this. Thank you. I, I, get... I love it so much. Um. I love and you to talk to a person who I adore. I know, same. I can't. I was. I was. We were, before we went live. I was saying. I think we have shows together, like in real life, and we both went. That's cute. <laughs> like, yeah, those, those I just, shows aren't happening. I'm not planning my life that far in advance. No, <laughs> please. But I hope we do. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And if not, we'll just have to keep zooming. You know. 
for sure. Well, at least I'll see you Wednesday for the toy drive show. Yes, I'm excited about that. If you want to find more information on Leanne Lord, please visit veryfunnylady.com. And also check out Leanne Lord on all the social medias, all of them, Mm -hmm. at Leanne Lord. Leanne, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Honey, thank happy you so holidays. much. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy yes, holidays. Yes, yes. Happy New Year, friend. Mm, bye. Oh, love Leanne. Uh, that was so great. And to Leanne's point, uh, I think that trying new things is super important during this time. And even if it's a skill that you think you have mastered, you can try to figure out how to do it better, right? And that's a great segue into just telling you really quickly. Uh, you could take a class, even if you've never done anything before, just to challenge yourself. So we have a partnership with 2MB and three weeks, thanks, Matt, dot courses, three weeks dot courses. This is uh, Gregory Scott and Danny Bellell have started this wonderful company where they're offering classes. They're three weeks long, just three weeks. That's it, three weeks, and you'll learn a new skill. Storytelling, poetry, uh, writing. There's so many, acting I think is in there. There's so many different things. And you should just take a look and you can go to threeweeks.courses for more information on those classes and tell them that 2MB sent you. Matt, let's play a quick video of a boy cursing out his dad because he's on the naughty list. You want absolutely. That's why you're. That's why you're on the naughty list. I would swear. Trust me. Well, that's why you're on the naughty list because because you're being naughty right now. So you're gonna be on the naughty list if you keep talking like that. No, no, because Father Christmas is not being very nice to me. Because you're being naughty, so you're on the naughty list. No, I'm not. I'm on the good list, actually. You're not because you you're not because you ain't being good. I am on the good list. If you keep saying that word again and again and again. I'm not Father Christmas r- rang me last night when I was at work yes. and said, you better tell Jackson to start being a good boy or he's going to stay on the naughty list and he won't I get no presents for Christmas. That's what he said to me. So you've got to start being a good boy. You know, I'll do what I to him. No, no, you won't do it. No, what? what? Like Punch him. Punch his beard off. You're just silly, man. Hey, trust me. I'm not on bad list. You're on the naughty list, mate. Wouldn't it be a good boy, Steph? Yeah. Oh, my what? goodness. Matt, What? I can't handle that kid. Did he just threaten Santa? He threatened him with an uppercut. There's just something about English kids. They're so adorable <laughs> when they're sassy. He's so mad, and he could be the prime minister. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he He's like, I'm not on the naughty list. You stop that again and again and again he's so mad he's a little so like adorable accent yeah speaking of that matt are you on the naughty list or are you on the nice list oh think? man i think i'm a i'm on both i'm definitely on both lists and it okay. just depends on like what it is the night of, yeah you know which which one i'm more on i really right. want to make t-shirts that say naughty or nice it's all subjective I think that's a wonderful T-shirt. We could sell it on our on our Two MB uh, Studios uh, uh, swag shop. Oh, yeah. thanks for hitting that softball I just sent you. We have a, tw- a Two MB swag shop. We do, we do. Oh, uh, we don't have any you- genuine nonsense up yet, but we will. Nothing, nothing uh, so far. Uh, but we will. Yeah, so check I want out just that a picture of you. I just want to see your smiling face on a on a shirt. I would wear. I that. don't know if people would wear just my shirt. Um, I do want to point out that Kit Kit Tempest mm-hmm. is saying Jack the Ripper was English, was he not? He, and, <laughs> you're Kit, not wrong, Kit. Very, that's a very good point, Kit. And he was definitely, definitely on the, on naughty, the naughty list. list. He's on the naughty list. You uh, stop saying that right now. You do have a guest uh, waiting for you that is definitely not on the naughty list. No. Your guest is definitely on the nice list. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, uh, so I'm going to leave. Do and I, I know them? You, uh, uh, you do know them. I do? Yes. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, I'm ready. All right, this is the part of the show that we like to call, nice to meet you. And sometimes I already know them. So let's bring in our guest. Oh, Techie! <laughs> Hi. 
I do the same thing every time, by the way. If it's someone I know and I love and I get excited, I go, oh! So, Hi, Kelly. Hi, how are you? Hi, Lauren, how are you? I'm good. We just got to see each other like a week ago. I know. And it that was so bad. Good. It was so fun. What that a fun good. show. Uh, Tiki Cavanaugh, hilarious stand-up comedian, mm. host of the rehash on Friday nights on 2MB Network, and also just pretty much all around like comedian everyone knows. Which, why? I don't leave my house even before lockdown. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't think you have to leave your house anymore. I think you can just stay home and make it happen for yourself. Probs, probs. probs. How's everything going? Oh, man. Um, I I'm I'm hanging in there. Um apparently I'm gonna wrestle some folks for Hanukkah. Uh <laughs> on on <laughs> oh <laughs> wait, go on. On QAW. It's, yes. it's yes, like not for real. Like <laughs> I did not know what was happening for a brief moment. I was like, hey, yeah. folks for Hanukkah. I was like, this doesn't seem like you. Tell me more. I don't I don't think yeah. my dad would approve. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> no, this is on on QAW. Yes. On quarantine action wrestling Digitally. Thursday nights yes. on 2MB. Yes. Uh so fun. Um when are you doing that? Uh I I, it, I it's a whole tournament. I guess. Oh, look. Eight, Eight crazy, crazy fights, fights as right. they call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I it just mm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's just it's a side of me that I didn't even know existed, but um, my wrestling alter ego is uh, called Crusher Cavaclaw. That and, makes sense. Yeah, and she's unstable. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> she's working it out. Yeah, she's working it out. So, so tune in for that. I'm scared. That's uh, so fun. I love that you're doing that. <laughs> Um, what have you been up to as far as your quarantining? Have you been doing anything fun? Jigsaw puzzles. Um, nice. the man at home got into, um, um, a very, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Okay. Do you have, does, does your man at home have a PlayStation? The child does. Okay. The not, the not, I call him the smaller of the two. The, okay. The 15-year-old. Okay. He does. Yeah. Oh, he's 15? Mm, oh, this might still yeah. be too soon for him. Oh, Just, really? Don't let the larger of the two yes. discover Yakuza 0 or the Yakuza game series. Because let me write we, this down. <laughs> because <laughs> we've been playing this a lot at home. And, um, yeah. What's it about? Oh, um, it's, it's an adventure role-playing game about the, um, seedy underbelly of, um, the criminal underworld in Japan, but also <laughs> there's a business chicken and <laughs> among right, other towns, business chicken, there's a business chicken, not the business end of a chicken. It's no, a business chicken. It's Got a it. Business chicken. You can, you can, <laughs> I'm spoiling a little bit, but okay, don't spoil, don't spoil. Okay. So you've been playing this game. Yes. And are you bonding over it? Do you feel I like don't... it's it's making your relationship stronger? E Oddly, yes, because if we can survive this, yes, we're in it for the long haul. <laughs> the like, underbelly uh underground what did you call it? The underground world. Yes, the of... city dark gangster underbelly of Japan. Right. Um it, it, okay. It's a very compelling plot. The story, I mean, it's like 30 minutes of cutscenes, but you're in it. Like you, <laughs> you will be invested. So we should play is what you're saying. My, my, my man at home and I should play this game. Yeah. After hours. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. mean, look, when you said puzzles, I was like, wow, how many pieces? And then you segued to this and I was like, wow, how many pieces? And it felt like the same questions were coming up for me. So yes. let me ask you, uh, the puzzles, what's the typical theme? And the seedy underground belly, what's the typical theme? Any oh. crossover? Yeah, I know. Respond. Actually, funnily enough, uh, the yes. theme seems to be Japan. Because, you, well, you know I was going to get married this year. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, and our honeymoon was going to be in Tokyo. <laughs> oh, so, amazing. I know. Um, 
so it'll it'll still yeah happen. It, it's gonna happen. happen it's fine it's fine yeah um but yeah funny enough i happened to pick up a bunch of jigsaw puzzles some of which are like nostalgia for me oh. from back in the day and one of the puzzles i picked up was a 550 piece sailor moon puzzle <laughs> It was very fun to complete. Uh, that's a lot of pieces. It is. Like 500, I start to cross my eyes. Like I'm, yeah. Yeah, but we, we've been going, this was tame for us because we've been okay. going the thousand route. Okay. For a few of them. I had a thousand, I abandoned it. I abandoned, I abandoned it back in June. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Once it's safe, I'll come over and help you out because I've Thank got a really good spatial awareness and figure outy brain. So, okay, good. Yeah. Now, do you use a table that's just dedicated to the puzzles or do you have a board? Oh, we haven't gone that far yet. We just have um, a dining table. Someone told me to get the board. They were like, just go to Home Depot and get a board. And that way you can like work on it and then you slide the board like under your bed or under the couch oh my or gosh I know I was like that's serious yeah oh we're not about that life but I think we should be at this point I mean who knows what life we're about anymore Can't I mean know. we don't know listen I would be remiss if I didn't tell people where they can find you because you are performing online a lot and because you're you know we're hustlers this is what we do this is what we do. You got to oh keep gosh. it going, you know? P.S. I love your last guess. I was listening in on oh, the conversation. Have you met Leanne before? I have not. Oh my gosh. I should introduce you. I'll introduce you to her. She is, I just love her. She's brilliant and funny and just genuine and yeah, amazing. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I should have. That's the surprise. You know. surprise. That's how it works. That's how it works. Um, also, also, I love how we've got like a similar decor situation happening. Yes. Um, cause I, um, mm, the, the, the patron saint of all, all that's good is also in my home. Let me, let me migrate. Oh, Hold on. I'm, I'm glitching a little. Is Dolly I'm around? glitching a little. It's St. Dolly. <clears throat> yep. St. <laughs> Dolly. That is the best. That, so where did you get your St. Dolly? Etsy. I mean, so this Dolly, a friend of mine, Liz Roderick, my dear friend, she knows I love Dolly and she got me this and it's some artist who does it. And then she had it framed for me. Oh. I want more Dolly. I want more. Dolly. The, the Dolly art is amazing. You got to get more Dolly. Yeah. I have one more and it's this here. Let me pull it off the wall and show it to you. And it says, <clears throat> what would Dolly do? And I have a shirt that says that. Of course you do. Of course you do. This is all making sense. <laughs> um, when's your next show? <sighs> you no, know? I know it's weird. This is a weird time of year. I just, you know what? Because they're not in physical spaces, it's right. really harder for me to remember that I have a schedule. Um, <laughs> yes, I am doing. I'm doing another college show. Oh, uh, later this week, which is going to be super fun. Get to scare some people who were born after 2000. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and then uh, I will be on the rehash, of course, this yes. Friday. Yes. And Sunday, I'm helping to co-host uh, Laughing for Liberation. Yes. Talk yeah. about Laughing for Liberation just a little bit. Going to be here on the 2MB channel. Mm -hmm. And that lineup is insane oh it's killer it's, it's a killer. really good lineup they, yeah. i mean we've got some of um boston comedy's favorites yes um perform again i don't want to ruin the surprises or spoil anything don't spoil but know that the people on this lineup are easily just some of the most talented people agree across not only new england but across the country maybe i'm a little oh. biased no, I agree. I saw that lineup and was like, all right. Yeah. All right, 2MB. I see yeah. you. I, I mean, see you. Booking shows. Yeah. We're laughing for a good cause. Um, yeah. We'll and talk so, about the cause for a minute. Yeah. So what it is, is um, Surge Boston. So it's showing up for racial justice. And it's a it's a national network. And they do like community organizing, mobilizing, um, education, and um, really striving for like a multiracial movement. Uh, yeah. for for like actual justice and treating people of color 
equally, you know? Um, and then, yeah. And, and we're also um, working with Community Change Inc., which yep. has been around since I believe 1968, if I'm not mistaken. So they've been around for a while. They've seen some stuff. Um, and it is like at the, it, it's the forefront, they're at the forefront of like Boston's anti-racist movement specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, w in in working with them uh, and also get that, we're hoping to see a couple donations going to these really great causes. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's so wonderful. Now, are you, you're co-hosting with... I am co-hosting with Matt Fear. Yes. <laughs> Producer Matt. He's hiding out right now. But he's also, he's he, also serves, well, he also serves as HR on the rehash and um yeah. we get in trouble a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted, I think, this show to be really like rah, 10 p.m. And then they remembered that like I'm basically filled with fluff. So and not fluff like um fluff in a figurative sense figurative sense like uh literally i'm just a fluff and utter sandwich like i'm sweet on the inside you know what i mean i agree um, <laughs> and, and I, the best possible thank Kelly, you. my bloodstream is 40 percent cheese i feel you i get it I, we have we we are bonded anyway um because we're in the trenches together and we get it i love that you're out there hustling i love that you're doing your show and Cheese and fluff. This is our new buddy cop show <laughs> called Cheese and Fluff. Oh my gosh. Cheese. Power, what? Cheese and fluff. Cheese, what are we going to do? Um, and I also want to point out that Kit Tempest says, remember her in nine to five? She had that gun and told the evil manager that if he wasn't careful, she'd turn him from. Oh, <laughs> from AC to a hen with one shot. I no. I don't remember that specific line, but I loved that movie. It was on HBO. She had that giant wig. Ugh, I love her. You know, I I can't unsee some stuff related to nine to five. <laughs> when 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 we travel down to Savannah, Georgia, highly when travel is safe and possible again, yes. highly recommend visiting Savannah, Georgia. It's beautiful, beautiful town. Okay. And there's a theater there um, that does like a review show. And of course, like the bus tours come through. Right. Uh, <laughs> so it's very friendly for all audiences. But um, an unwitting patron in the front row of a church bus group <laughs> got plucked from the audience. <laughs> and the two lead women of the show um, tied him up in a chair and sang nine to five. It was. Oh, my gosh. Someone's dad was not well. <laughs> Remember that part of the movie is like so disturbing too, if you think about it. Like they basically tied him up and like didn't they have like a garage door opener and like yeah. I mean, but you know what? We did what we had to do to advance That's right. feminism. That's right. That is that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if and if you don't know what we're talking about right now, 95, you must watch and report back. Thank you so much, people watching. It's required uh, it's required viewing, absolutely. Um, I'm so glad that you stopped by and I'm so glad that we um, got to see each other on a show. It was so nice to like, just feel normal and I mean, as normal as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, oh my gosh, what a great show. And yeah. you're a phenomenal host. Oh, well. thank you, thank you. Oh, I mean, I was in heaven, are you kidding me? That was like, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. When I'm watching the show and having a good time, I sometimes, that's the only problem with online shows. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing something. Right. Like I'm having fun. And because I'm not, you know, I'm also a comedy fan. So, you know, it's yeah. just nice to see comedy. Um, and tell everybody your um, Twitter handle real quick. So people can um, Kelly, you have the misfortune of following me. I don't know why you ever did that to yourself. I love it. Oh, it is so, I love it. I think because I know you, right? Like, right. I know you and I also, you're like, you're stirring it. And I love that. Yeah. A little, a little the pot. I love it. A little, gets a little stirred. It's a little um, bit sticky. We're spilling up some tea. We're starting, stirring a pot. We're starting December 12th. I've, uh, a, I put out a poll and so far the, 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 the consensus has been do it. So um, 
12 days of poop posts. I don't want to swear on your show. <laughs> shit posts? Yes. You can, you can <laughs> swear. 12 days of Christmas is 12 days of shit posts. Oh my gosh. It's Tookie Monster, right? At Tookie Monster on Twitter. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. I, there we go. Thank you, Matt. I apologize in advance to anyone who just, uh, like, why? Listen, I, I am all for, I'm all, I'm here for it. I like your Twitter. I don't know why you say that. I, I think it's like, also because I know, I know you and I know that you are like, it's just, you know, you're doing, you're, you're just like, Hey, Hey, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. I love it. Doesn't say it. You know what? <laughs> I, you're holding up a mirror. That's all I'm saying. You're holding, <laughs> holding up a mirror. Uh, Tookie, I'm so glad to see you and check out Tookie on the rehash every Friday night, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. 10.30 p.m. 10.30 p.m. every Friday. Yep. And then also the show that's on Sunday. Yes. Uh, there's a Facebook page for that, I believe. And maybe I can have Matt dig that out before the show's over and we'll have them put that up. So yeah. people can. There should be an event page, but it's streaming right on 2MB. Yes. And make sure to tune in and donate. Yes, donate. I mean, it's a lot of talent donating their time. So share the love back and make a donation so that we can raise some money on 2MB. Ah, oh, I love you. Uh, you're love great. You. Thank I you so much you again for like, letting me lurk. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you for coming in. Like, I'm thrilled that Matt keeps surprising me with like people that I like and respect so much. All right. Good night. Happy holidays. See you soon. Oh, that was fun. Um, Want to do Islands in the Stream? It's a duo. Um, are you talking to me in the chat? Because yes is the answer every single time. I always want to sing Islands in the Stream. Uh, when I had my day job, I would wake up every morning and sing the nine to five theme. That's how I got up in the morning because it would get me like up and going. And also, and this is not a lie, I lived alone and I would be like, dun, 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 cause it just kind of gets you up and, and at them. You know what I mean? Uh, Producer Matt. <laughs> Stumble out of bed and come in the kitchen, pour myself a cup of ambition. Yawn and stretch and try to come alive. Tookie just left. Tookie was laughing, and then she just—I saw her just leave. Peace out. That was so much fun. I'm loving this. The last couple weeks, or the last few weeks, you've had guests that I know. It is bringing me so much joy. Yeah. It's so fun. I love it. Oh, Smars is in the yeah. The typey sound. Smart, yeah, the typey sound. Oh. Uh, she did that with her nails. Oh yeah. Um, that I loved that. Movie. I still love that movie. I still love that. Uh, movie. I haven't watched it in in forever. I should really go back and watch it. But uh, Lily Tomlin and I was, and, and uh, I was just gonna say that that's like when they find the joint. When they find the joint that leads to them, you know, having their having their fantasies about it's killing moment. killing the boss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and hers uh, is with the bird and the rat poison. Yeah. 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 Oh. She stirs the Yeah. She stirs, she stirs, stirs the it in the spoon, just disintegrates. Yeah. Because the rat poison looks like the sugar substitute. Right. Uh What's that actor's name? The man. Daphne Cole or I'm sorry, Dabney. Dabney, Dabney? Coleman. Dabney Coleman. I think it's either Dabney or Dabney. Oh, all right. We'll have to I look. I think it's Dabney. Uh, also on the caramel caramel. Yes. Set. Thank you, Matt. Uh, researching. It is Dabney. D-A-B-N-E-Y Coleman. Okay. Um, so caramel is the food, is the flavor, is the color. Okay. Car caramel. Caramel. Uh, caramel is a place. Like there's a Mount Carmel. There's a right. Carmel, California. There's, there's a, a Carmel, Maine. Carmel, Maine. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is a place. Caramel is uh, is actually how it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Because so. I love caramel. Yeah. Caramel's how you're caramels. talking about it. Caramels. But I always say caramel. Caramel. What's that from Goodwill Hunting when he's like, she says, do you want to go get a cup of coffee? And Matt, do you like apples? he's no, 
Yes. He says, how do you like them apples? No, that's when he goes to get the, oh. get the number and he's like, oh, God. I love it, Matt. <laughs> no, she says, I'm like, do you want to get some coffee or something? There's a lot of British accents tonight. Poorly done, by the way. I'm fully aware. I'm very self-aware. And he says, or we can just go chew a bunch of caramels. Because that's oh. his arbitrary as drinking coffee. I don't yeah. know. Very, I went oh, a long way Matt that. Damon. Matt Damon. You he was adorable. so dreamy. Yeah, it's so <sighs> dangerous. So dreamy. And that's when Ben Affleck had his small teeth. Oh, he, he had small teeth? His, yeah, he hadn't gotten his caps yet. Oh, he had small teeth. How about that? Mm -hmm. You ever wonder, like, okay, so he drives across country and just shows up at yeah. this woman's place yep. after being violent and and like yes. scary to her. Like, I don't think Goodwill Hunting Two would have worked out very well for him. <laughs> I don't think a sequel. I think that's why they didn't make a sequel. They're like Goodwill this Hunting Two Electric Boogaloo. It ends very differently. Very poorly. Yes. Yeah. Kevin um, Smith made a joke about that in um, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh, really? Uh, they were doing Goodwill Hunting 2 Hunting Season is what it was called. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple more shows for Genuine Nonsense yeah. before the end of the year. Uh, we're going to have some guests on talking all sorts of nonsense. All sorts of nonsense over the next couple of weeks. A lot of holiday themes, which is exciting. Yeah. And we're just going to tell 2020, like, bye. Boy, bye. Don't and let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Split you. Um, I feel strongly that this, this video that we're going to go out on, I found this and my husband and I, my partner and life and love, we have been watching this video repeatedly for a couple of weeks. Like we can't stop watching it because this is how everyone feels. I've never seen that. I haven't seen this video. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Just by the title of the video, I have a feeling I'm going to love it. Just how everyone feels right now, being home, stuck with people, right? Like just our current climate, um, and we'll go out on this video. Thank you so much for joining Genuine Nonsense again. Thank you, Leanne Lord, for being with us. Thank you, Tookie Cavanaugh, for being with us. Producer Matt, I love you more than life itself. Aww. And we'll go out on this, and um, we'll see everybody next week. Here we go. All right. Lily, mm -hmm. I just watched you touch Jude's food. I don't like it. Yes, you did. I it right you touched Jude's food. No, I'm not the food. Yes, you did touch the food. No, I'm not the food. Did you touch Jude's food? No, I'm not the food. You touched Jude's food. I just watched you do it. I'm not the food. No, I'm not the food. Yes, you did touch his food. No, no, I'm not the food. You touched his food. Were you playing in Jude's food? <laughs> you touched the food. No, I didn't eat the food. You did touch the food. No, I didn't eat the food because I didn't eat the food. Okay. You did touch his food. I watched you touch it. No. Daddy watched you touch it. You touched the food. No, I didn't touch the food. You didn't touch the food. No, I didn't touch the food. You did touch the food. No, I didn't touch the food. With him, right? You did it with your right hand, didn't you? No, I didn't touch the food. Are you? Don't yell at me. You did it. Watch that clutch fit. No, I didn't touch the food. You better turn it down. I didn't touch the food. You did touch the food. Touch the food. Mailchimp's customer journey smarts 